morning everybody today I remembered to put the camera on I um I've had a couple of busy days so I haven't actually made a lot I did however I got some little pictures from a garden book called fussy cut out so I did that and I cut some square ones out also so that Got done. I also, the cat was walking around in the top of my cupboard the other day and knocked over this little basket here that I've had up there since I moved in the room. It's been knocked over a few times and I just shut it all back in and put it up on. But it's got all my crepe paper, all my gathered crepe paper and all my straight crepe paper. And I made this, I made this following a, a blog tutorial or a blog post by, I think it was Carla Nathan. And I made this years ago before, I made it before my One Precious Thing Challenge because I remember talking about it when I received... A little bit of gathered crepe paper or pleated crepe paper from one of the entries. So anyway, I've had this for ages and I've used it every so often. I've cut a bit off and used it in um, a journal or something. And then when it fell on the floor the other day, I thought, you know, I'm going to use a bit in my journals, in my um, garden journals. So I have some pre-gathered and this is quite messy but that's okay I must have had something in mind when I did it so this is a quite messy one with the blue tip and this one's a little bit more tidy with the brown tip the way I made it I actually soaked it in some dye so it just gradually went up and in this one there's actually a bit of glimmer mist in it I don't know what I used for that, but there's a little glimmer mist in this one. And this one's just a, a more rustic looking, but it gives that ombre effect. So that's something to keep in mind when you have some crepe paper. And I have quite a bit of it. I have quite a bit of it. I think, see that's, I did three different types. I did the blue, I did this rusticy one with the yellow, and then there's one that's just brown. So I have, and I have a bit of straight one there as well. And I thought I would just use a little bit of it. Um, so I've just been playing around. As you can see here, I've just ripped a little bit off the, well, cut actually, cut a little bit off this one. And I thought, well, maybe I could just do some collage pieces. That's just a bit of stitched paper, my little words that I did on the other video and a bit of yarn and I could stick that on like that. And thank you for all the comments on that video. Um, I, do you recall I was mentioning about the little boxes, how I'd seen it? Now, I'd seen that on Instagram. A lot of people were saying I just need to go to my history and I'd find where I saw it. And I know how to do that on YouTube. I have no problem finding things on YouTube. It's um, it's Instagram. I, have no, I, I don't know how to find things that I may have liked a couple of months ago. Um, so, but thank you everyone who kind of mentioned the, going back into my history or my like list. I do know how to do that. Um, it's Instagram I have problem with because I don't go on, you know, I just flick through other people's pretty images on Instagram. That's basically why I've got it. And when I remember to put something up that I've made, then I, I do. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I also, you know gathered them up like flowers now that's full size crepe paper there and then a mini one I thought I could put that on top like that and um, that could have something in the middle of it as well if I wanted to or I just use this small one if I wanted to or I could perhaps use one of the flowers that I made before put those in the middle of it as well so that's another idea. Um, I've, that cut.
cut it down to that size. See, that's the that's the full size of the crepe paper. And that's the smaller size. Actually, I think I found some crepe paper. I did. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. Um, that's right, I did. Although it's not, it's not dark. It's a, it's a beige colour, but that might be nice as well. That, I found that at the op shop weeks and weeks ago when I was going to follow along with Amy. Um, I also have a blue one here and a pink one of crepe paper. But we're going to use the pre-ruffled one. might use those in other projects. So um, I do love the look of this though. Let's just move that, and it's raining today, can you hear that? And so all I'm going to do is perhaps make a smaller one there. Oh, got it. Okay, and that's just, there is no right and wrong side of this, I don't think. And you just kind of plate it over the top of itself like that. And I hope everybody is keeping themselves well and keeping themselves doing things. Um, stop watching the news for a while. It gets to you after a while. So you need to get away from it and, you know, do something that makes you feel good and happy. Okay, so that's one. And I've just got my stapler here. And I'm just going to staple it like that. These are actually blue staples, so that's that one there. Where did I put the other? Oh, okay. <laughs> I put it away, didn't I? So I'm just kind of guessing how much I will need for this. I do like the little sparkles in it, though. I must have put it in the solution. I actually don't know what I used for the colour on it. It's so long ago. Must be a good three years. I hope I've been in shot there. I'm notorious for getting out of shot I think. Okay. I don't need it overlapping too much, so I might just cut it off there. Like that, and just... Okay, like that. I'll put a, a staple or two in that as well. Maybe two in the bigger one. Go. So maybe if I just have one of those in each of the journals, so I'll make up another four of those. And then, you know, I could have some of these. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to do. I was um, watching an old video of Crafty Irena and she was doing these little pocket tuck things with her book paper. Now this book paper is it's very weak so I don't think I'll be using that for that but I may have some of the stronger ones around here somewhere. Just, um, um, okay so I have this book I've used a lot of my books already, which is good because, you know, I try to use them. This one has a lot of stuff in here. Like, it's got some nice pictures, but then it's got other stuff that I don't particularly um, want the pictures of. So maybe I can use some of these. And it is a garden book. And I have two of these books, which is nice because I, I tend to get home sometimes and think to myself, I don't want to cut it up now. So when I find an extra one, then I will cut I will I will cut one up. 
so because I'm gardening at the moment I hesitate to cut them up so it's four I need two more that one that one and take another one just trying to get mainly writing on them that one's a good one Okay, that one. And when it's a garden book, you don't really have to worry too much about what it says, do you? Sometimes you can get books and you've got to be careful, like a, a romance novel or something like that, of what they say. Okay, let's start with all that. So this is, this is fairly easy. I'm not going to worry about straightening up my edges because that's the whole theme going through what I'm doing here. So start off by folding it in half and this has probably been done a lot on YouTube. Like I said, I saw this uh, video from Crafty Irena and I will put a link to that in the description box below. Then you take the back piece here, instead of folding it right up close to the fold, just take it out a little bit, perhaps there, like that. And you can fold that, fold it to the front, and then take this one. Is that how she did it? You can fold it down like that, or you can take it right to the edge. Fold it down like that and just give it a little bit more interest. Um, but of course you could have that right against that fold if you wanted to. And then you just take the back and fold it like that. So it was like that. I might need to I just zoom up a bit, sorry. Like that. And then you fold that up. You don't have to take it right to the top. You can take it right to the top like that. That's what I did on my little sample when I was watching. But, you know, you could have that as big as you wanted, really. I can't see why not. Instead of it being quite so square like that, you could have it down a bit like that. Which, which, you, which I might actually do that. I might actually do that. Where you could um, just adds a little bit more interest and brings this a little bit lower. That's what I think I will do. Um, if you're gluing this, now you can glue that shut, or if you wanted to have like a larger tag in the back, you could leave that part open, which I might just do for that. And this paper will it will take that. So. What you do is you open it and you put a little bit of glue on here, like that to keep it in place. And the same with this, unless you want it flipping up. I don't particularly want it flipping up. I'm not going to write under there, so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there to keep that in place as well. If your paper's a little bit weak, you could use double thickness paper if you wanted to. Um, so that's going to go like that. I am going to leave the back part open and I am going to leave that shabby like that but I may, I think I'll ink it up a little bit just so it blends in with the rest of it as well. And this is just the walnut stain ink that I like to use. Okay, see how that just blends in there? If I went like that it would be quite alright. Like and I'm not going to ink the edges there because I don't particularly like everything inked. I like, you know, I think when things age naturally they don't always age every part of it, you know. Um, like it wouldn't, the inside of something wouldn't be aged like the outside of something, that's what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, now I can just glue that there to hold that in place and here if I want. Or I can stitch that. I can do both. I could put a little bit of glue there right now to hold it. Where's my fold? And if I want to stitch that a little bit later, I can. Okay. So now I have that pocket in there, um, a pocket in there, and a pocket in there. And I just need to make a few little tags to go in there. Okay, so I'll be making one each for the books of those as well. And decorating them, what am I going to do? I could use these as well. I could put a little bit of that on there and maybe not stitching, maybe just that or a flower or something like that. They can be easily decorated up. I probably wouldn't put anything too um, dimensional on them. And remember, you're going to have tags in there as well. See, even that with a little... just a little flower or something is quite nice. Okay, so I'm going to make some of those and I also wanted to just do some simple, simple um, corner tucks as well. You know, just a corner tuck, that's a bit big. How big would I want about like that? Perhaps, let's make sure it's straight. And these have been around for a long, long time. I think the first time I ever saw these was probably oh, Yvonne Preston. And I think she always says they came from Rita Donnelly. So a lot of people do them. And that's just a corner tuck. Um, you probably normally have your paper cut. Now I could have that on the page like that and have it flipping up like that. It's caught in a tuck flip thing. Or I could just cut it off there and have like a normal corner tuck like that. And then you just put a piece of blank paper underneath it so that it will, um, so you can write on it. Like you put a piece of paper there so it's like hidden and then you open it up I don't know whether I want to leave it long like that or not what are my books so you get more of a pocket when it's big than when it's little like that I quite like it big to be honest yeah which it does look like that, but it is different. You could almost put that in there, couldn't you? Okay, and I'll leave the bottom part shabby. I like that. I'll just probably once again put a little bit of ink down this side here. Like that. So that when that closes, yeah, just like that. Okay, and then work out just a simple, a simple decoration for it. Perhaps something down here, and then just a bit of paper up here. Uh, that's not our dog barking, that's somebody else's dog. Have you noticed how quiet it is at the moment? It's just incredibly quiet. Um, apart from dog barking, 
like of a night time, you know, there's no barely any aeroplanes going, so there's no there's no air pollution no noise, there's barely any cars driving around. Um as well. And like we have a train station fairly close and I think they must have cut down on the amount of trains that are going as well because not as many people are travelling on them. So it's a lot quieter than it normally is. I might use that and uh, make it a little bit different. something like that and I can be able to write on that mm. my husband's still able to work and most of my children, which is really nice to know. Uh, I think there's only one of them that their work is, they've lost a lot of business. Okay, that looks about right, doesn't it? So that's that's, that's good for them. Well, it's not good for the one that's lost a lot of business, but, you know, it's good that like they've still got some business. Just not as much. Oh, like that. Is that going to cover that? I don't think it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So, that will go on there. But I might stitch that and then glue it to this. Uh, is that what I want to do? Or did I want to just stitch it on there? It just seems a bit further. I wonder if it will go that way better. Like that. That seems better, doesn't it? I think I had that the wrong way. That does, that does seem better because it's closer to the edge yeah. that way. I think I'll do that. I'll just put a little bit of glue to hold that in place because I'll do these all together and then show you let's just make sure yeah that's fine so that's what I'll do that way I can stitch it all on in one go and do that okay so I want to be making about six or seven of those ones as well so that can be written on it'll have stitching on it and um, I was going to use this stuff, wasn't I? Could use it down the bottom there. That would be nice, just sort of hanging out of the... But then it covers up that shabby edge, and I like that shabby edge there. Could be up there. I don't know, I'll make them first and then I'll work that out. So I want to be making some of those. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Look, I've got this. I forgot about it. It's just sat there. I could use some of this on it. Like that. That's nice. Yes, I quite like that. Either there or there. I like that. I like it there. That way it's decorating both and it doesn't really need much more than that, does it? Oh, okay. We'll use that. I'll put that there so I don't forget. I also have the fabric that I gathered up too that I can use. It's quite pretty, but then it, that might work on the bottom of that as well. Like that. Okay. I need to make them first. I need to go ahead and make them first. And I want to get this done because I found something else I want to go on with, but I, I don't want to go on with it until I've finish these books because I otherwise it's just another thing hanging around isn't it 
and I got enough of it. And this thing I want to go on with is actually something that I made five years ago and it's hanging around ready to finish. Um, I was looking for something else the other day and came across it and thought, oh my goodness, I never finished them. So um, this is definitely something I want to go on with after I've done this. So I need to get these finished. So I'm going to go off and do these. And all I'm doing, I've just added a little bit of glue to the center of the first larger rosette. I have a small one. I'm just placing it in the center like that, putting a little bit more glue. And I'm just using Helmart 450 quick dry adhesive, putting a little flower in the center then adding just a little bit more and sticking on a tool knotted. It's like a bow but it's not, it's just a knot and that'll dry really quickly and that'll make a nice, oops, bit too much glue there, but um, a nice little page embellishment and I'll go through and do all of them. And with these little flip ups, I have stitched the paper on the inside there. I'm just getting my little shabby edge strip and lining it up there, cutting it like that. With the straight edge, you can just rip those pieces to make them look a little bit more um, shabby. Now you can have it like that. You can get a bit of the crepe paper and put that underneath. The All right, sorry about that. My um, battery needed recharging. So I was just trying that little bit of, um, what's it called? Crepe paper under there, which I like a lot. So I think that's what I will do on some of them, not on all of them, and use some of that edging strip that I made in a previous video. While my battery was charging, I went ahead and cut some pieces of index card up. I think they measure six by three and a quarter inches, like that. And then what I'm going to do is just round the corners and lightly ink them. And they will sit inside the pocket because this side will be open. They will sit inside the pocket like that. I may or may not decorate. It's for my own personal use, so um, I probably won't decorate it, but by all means, you know, if you want a fussier kind of book, um, like if this wasn't just a normal gardening book, I probably would decorate it, but because I know I'm just going to be scribbling all over it, I'm not going to... Um, but I do like some pretty things, of course. And for this part here, I thought with the, okay, with these, maybe I'll use like these little fussy cut pieces just to put something that's not too over the top, over the book page on that triangular piece there. It doesn't add any more bulk. And I think that will be nice for that. Um, these little ones here, all I've done, the off cuts, because these were larger index cards, they were probably about eight by five, and I've just used all the little off cut pieces and lightly inked, that's what I'm going to do, that one can go in the front pocket, that one can go in the back pocket there, and I'm not sure if I will put something in here yet or not so but that's what I'm up to I'm in the process of inking up the index cards at the moment so I will go ahead and do that stick that down put little pictures on the front of all these ones and decide oh I know what I'm going to do but I can't do that until I put them in the book um, so I'll show you that when I put them in the book so I'll go ahead and do those things now Okay, so I think that's it for today now. I have made all the little crepe paper flowers like that. I've made all the tuck spots or what are they called? They're called like a corner flip 
I've made all those and what I've done is I've just stamped the tag with a lovely butterfly from Couture Creations one on the front one on the back and just done a zigzag around each of those tags so if the corner goes that way you put the butterfly there if it goes the opposite way you turn it over so that's all the tags there I have made them all they're all pretty much the same some don't have the crepe paper some do all the images are slightly different but they all have the the paper underneath a little bit different these ones go the opposite way I love this fiber it's so pretty and so soft and there's the images and there's a couple more there as well so that's all of those done I've also made the little triple triple pockets I think they're called and I've put crepe paper down the bottom a little bit of stitched paper over the top so if it goes if that's the corner of the page there that one will go on it with the paper coming out it will stick to the page and it you know it still allows things to get in there um, and these ones go in the opposite direction and what I've done is just use a Couture Creations leaf stamp and just stamped in the corner there. I may stitch around it like I did with these ones. I was just looking at it then. I'm thinking I may do that. Um, that way it'll frame around the side there. And I've also put a book paper flower with a little bit of mercury glass stickles, which I love in the center and that is it for today I hope you've enjoyed this video I do appreciate you taking the time to watch and do take care and I'll see you next time bye